This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. More about them later in the video. You can never accelerate any object to the speed of light. We saw that last time. But when I went through the comments, you asked one question. What does it all look like from the perspective of the ship? This is such an amazing question because you see, when we're looking from the outside, even though the ship is constantly accelerating, what we would see is that as it goes close to the speed of light, the electromagnetic forces will start taking forever to transfer the forces from one atom to another. And that's why when we look from the outside, we will see its acceleration weirdly slowing down as it approaches C. And that's the reason it will take infinite amount of time to reach the speed of light. That was the explanation. However, what you folks are asking, which is a brilliant question, that is, but you know, what if we are to look from the perspective of the ship itself? From the perspective of the ship itself, the acceleration stays a constant. So shouldn't we be able to eventually reach the speed of light and actually go beyond it? What do you got to say about that, Einstein? Well, Einstein says, Mohesh, um, as a captain of the ship, do you see the ship moving? And I say, well, as a captain, I don't see the ship moving because I'm moving along with the ship, but Einstein, I know it's moving because it is accelerating. I feel the forces of the acceleration. So I know that it's really moving. But Einstein reminds us that, um, you know, even though we feel the forces of acceleration, all of that is great. Motion is always a relative term. You can only say or measure something is moving if you can see it to be moving, right? There is no such thing as real motion, all right? So since motion is relative, Einstein asks, Mahesh, relative to you, do you see the ship moving? I was like, no, I don't see the ship moving. People inside the ship will not see the ship moving. Therefore, what's the speed of the ship as seen by the people inside the ship, he asks. Yeah, it's zero. <laughs> of course. That's what it means to be, that what, that's what the meaning of perspective of the ship means, right? If you're looking at from the ship's reference frame, it literally means from a frame where the ship is at rest. So of course, the speed of the ship from the ship's perspective is always zero because from the ship's perspective is everything else that's moving. That's how relativity works. So that question gets thrown out of the window, right? <laughs> because from the ship's perspective, the ship is always at rest, even though it's constantly accelerating forever. But from the outside's perspective, we just saw that the ship can never reach the speed of light. So then that question makes no sense. Should we not talk about it? No, 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 I think that question makes perfect sense. I also feel you folks, okay? This is just a reminder that we need to be very careful about how we articulate things, especially when you're talking to someone like Einstein. Here's how we can reframe that question you asked. Einstein, see, if I were to look outside the window, I would see the earth and everything else accelerating backwards, right? Now I know that this is not real acceleration. It's an apparent acceleration. Nobody's pushing on the earth and making it accelerate. It's really me who's accelerating forward. I know the acceleration part that is absolute because I can feel the forces. But from my perspective, I see the earth and everything else apparently accelerating backwards, right? Okay, now here's a key question. Okay, are you ready folks? Here's a key question. See, when we are looking at the ship from the outside, the problem was uh, electromagnetic forces were taking forever to transfer from atom to atom because there was an actual force acting on it and therefore the forces had to be transferred. That was slowing down and therefore the acceleration was weirdly slowing down. But when we are looking at the earth and everything else, there is no such problem because there is no real force acting on it. Every atom of this earth will feel, you know, we will see every atom of the earth accelerating backwards at the same time, right? Right? Einstein, do you agree that, you know, that effect that we saw over here does not appear here? And Einstein says, absolutely. He agrees with us. That effect does not take place. Therefore, the question we should be asking Einstein is, then Einstein, from our perspective, when you look at the Earth and everything else, shouldn't we see its acceleration to be a constant? And therefore, shouldn't we see it eventually reaching the speed of light and then go beyond? Isn't that, shouldn't that be happening? And Einstein says, no. Einstein says, even though we don't have to transfer electromagnetic forces, this effect does not happen. We will still see the acceleration weirdly slowing down and therefore it will never reach the speed of light. But I'm like, how Einstein? How? <laughs> how does it make any sense? And what Einstein says to this is not really mind blowing. It's very unsettling actually, because on one hand, whatever he's going to say will make perfect sense. And yet, on the other hand, 
it will be like very dissatisfactory. Like, you know, it'll feel like there's some gaping hole in our logic. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for what Einstein's gonna say? All right, here's what he says. Einstein says one of the fundamental rules of relativity, whether it is Newtonian relativity or Einsteinian, whatever relativity, is that if I see you moving to the left with speed v, then you will see me moving to the right with that exact same speed v. And I'm like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And therefore now Einstein says, well, if, if you agree with this, Mahesh, now we've already established that from the Earth's perspective, we will never see that speed uh, to be c. So clearly, if you agree with this rule, from the ship's perspective also, we should never see the Earth <laughs> reaching the speed c, right? I told you folks, see, how do you, agree, how do you uh, argue with that? Perfect logic, ironclad. And yet, there's this lingering question in my head. But what happens to that acceleration? Shouldn't that acceleration stay a constant? Because if this is true, then somehow even that acceleration, the apparent acceleration that we see of the earth and everything else should somehow decrease. But what makes it decrease? I don't understand it. There seems to be some gap in my understanding. And uh, Einstein says, yes, Mohesh, there is a gap because um, there is a missing piece over here. And I'm like, what is that piece, Einstein? Tell me, tell me. And Einstein says, oh, well, I can tell you or we can discover it together. And I'm like, well, folks, if you've seen this channel, you know we'll go for discovery. So Einstein, let's discover it together. Speaking of discovering physics, one of the cool ways to do that is using brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant has math, science, computers, and data courses, and their simulations are super useful in gaining intuition. And one of my favorite courses, well, no surprise, is special relativity. Using visuals and interactive storytelling, it actually helped me discover concepts. For example, I went through their twins paradox and I looked at the situation from different perspectives and by drawing various space-time diagrams, I discovered the true resolution. There's no paradox for me anymore. <laughs> I love Brilliant and I recommend it to my students as well. So if you wanna check it out, there's a 30-day free trial, but the first 200 of you can get a 20% off on the annual premium subscription. All you gotta do is go to brilliant.org slash floated physics. The link is also in the description. Thanks again for the support. And now back to the video. So come on Einstein, how do we discover it? Einstein says time for a thought experiment. This time imagine we have a giant platform at rest, cosmic size platform, let's say. And we have this spaceship hovering over it but traveling very close to speed of light, let's say with some speed v. Now this is the platform's perspective. However, if you look at the same things from the ship's perspective, well, we see the ship to be at rest and the platform moving towards the left with that very high speed v. This is no ordinary ship, folks. It is also installed with a giant stamping machine. You click a button and a stamping machine, a stamp will come out and it'll stamp that particular, it'll put a stamp mark on that platform. Okay, and the thought experiment we're gonna do is, we're gonna have a timer with us, so here's our photon clock that we saw last time. We're gonna click the button, stamp it, wait for one more second, and click the button again. In other words, we're gonna put two stamps one second apart. And the whole question is, what does it look like from the ship's perspective, and then what does it look like from the platform's perspective? So let's look at it. Let's look at what the whole situation looks like from the ship's perspective. Remember, from the ship's perspective, the ship itself is at rest, the platform is moving backwards with the speed v. So let's look at what it looks like. Here we go, samp, timer has started, one second up, samp two. That's it. And the question I have for you is, how far apart are these two stamps? Well, that's not, that's not very hard. We know that they are one second apart, and we know that this platform is moving backwards with the speed v, Therefore, it would have traveled exactly V meters, right? In one second, it would have covered V meters. Therefore, this distance must be exactly V. Okay, Einstein, come on. Come on, you gotta do better than that. Give us a more challenging question. But now Einstein asks, Mahesh, what does the whole situation look like from the platform's frame? And I'm again like, well, it's the same thing, right? Now this time the platform is at rest and the ship is moving forward with the speed V, so it'll move distance V. So again, won't we see the same thing? But Einstein reminds us that when we look at the ship now and its clock now, that clock is dilated. Now it's gonna take more time for the ticks to happen. In fact, if we assume that the speed is so high that the time dilation factor is two, then that would mean that we will have to wait two seconds in our clock in this frame, standing on the platform, we'll have to wait for two seconds for this one tick to happen. 
That means in between the two stamping, I will see that ship traveling for two seconds, which means I will see it traveling for twice the distance. Let's see. Stamp. Dilated time. It took two seconds in our clock for that one second to tick. And therefore, these are now two seconds apart, folks. Which means that the ship has traveled for 2e and therefore this distance must be 2e. Wait a second, wait a second. Einstein, what's really going on over here? Why are we getting this discrepancy? Well, Einstein reminds us that, hey, because time passes at different rates, when you look at that ship from the ship frame and you look at it from the platform's frame, then because of that, the time between the two events will be different, right? Yeah. And therefore, if the time between the two events are different in different frames, the spacing between the two events is also turning out to be different. So just as how time is relative, we are seeing that the distance between two points is also a relative term. We don't agree on that. Do you understand how freaky this is? The people in the ship, the pilot of the ship saying that the stamps are wee distance apart, but we on the platform are saying, uh-uh, the, the stamps are too wee distance apart. Whoa. But wait, wait, Einstein, does this mean that if you were to put a markers markers on the on the whole platform that we would disagree on the physical location of where that stamps have been? Like that can't be true, right? Einstein says, no, 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 we won't disagree. And the reason we won't disagree is because just like how the stamps are closer over here, even the markings will be closer over here. The distance between the atoms will also be smaller. Everything, distance between any two points, as you see from the ship on the platform and anything else would look closer. Therefore, you will not just see the stamps closer, but you will actually see the whole thing shrunk in the direction of the motion. This is what we call length contraction. This means moving things will always have a length that is shorter in the direction of the motion compared to when you look at it from a rest frame. And now if you're wondering that from the platform's frame, the ship is moving and therefore it should be length contracted, you're right. It is also length contracted. Now we may be wondering, well, how much does it get length contracted? Well, over here we saw that it got length contracted to half the value. Why did it length contract to half the value? Oh, that's because the time dilation factor was two. This means that if that spaceship was moving at a much higher velocity where the time dilation factor was three, do you agree that this would be three V? So this means that the amount of length contraction, the contracted length will always be equal to the proper length, which is the length that you see from the rest frame, divided by the time dilation factor. Time dilation factor gamma, which we've seen before. So right in front of your eyes, folks, you can see how space and time are inevitably intertwined together. There is no escaping it. This is the reason why in special relativity, we don't like to talk about space and time as two different things. You can see right in front of your house how they affect each other. Time dilation is literally causing length contraction. That's why a more rigorous way to think about special relativity is in terms of not space and time, but space time. <laughs> That's why we talk about space time. This formula can be confusing. So remember, L prime represents the length of an object that is moving when you're looking at it from a moving frame. That will always be smaller when you look at the length of that same object from a rest frame. So proper length will always be the maximum, moving length will always be shorter. And uh, this, Einstein says, was the missing piece of the puzzle. We did not incorporate for length contraction when we're looking at things from inside the ship and we're looking at everything going backwards. All right. So we can now incorporate this and see if it all makes sense. But before we do that, I have one more question for Einstein. How real is this? Like, is length contraction real? Do we have evidence for it? And Einstein says, well, first of all, the fact that we have evidence for time dilation that we've already seen last video is an in indirect evidence for length contraction because remember, it all comes from there. By the way, think about it. Length contraction comes from time dilation, which comes from the fact that the speed of light is a constant in all the reference frames. It literally, like and I, I keep telling, everything in special relativity can be derived from just that one single thing, that the speed of light must be same in all reference frames. I love, that's the beautiful thing about physics. Anyways, but Einstein, do we have like a more direct evidence for it? Einstein says, yes. One of the direct evidence of it can be seen in electromagnets. Like what? In electromagnets, 
I already made a video explaining how, you know, the only way to understand electromagnetism from different frames is if you consider special relativity. Length contraction is literally required to understand how electromagnets work from different perspectives. If you want, you can, you can check that out. It's called Why Moving Charges Produce a Magnetic Field. But we have direct evidence, folks, that length contraction is a real phenomena. It's not an illusion. But anyways, it's time to put it all together and look at that Earth again, all right? So if you were to look at that Earth from that moving ship where our acceleration is a constant, um, if we zoom out a little bit, what would it look like from the ship's perspective? Well, if we ignore time uh, length contraction, this is what it would look like. Let's see. We would see that Earth constantly accelerating backwards. And because it is constantly accelerating, we would see that it starts covering more and more and more and more distance. Now this animation may not be perfect, but it makes sense, right? So you can imagine every second, it's covering more and more distance because it's constantly accelerating. This is what we would hope to see if there was no length contraction. And this was our earlier intuition. This is how we were thinking. So we could say this is from Newtonian perspective. And in this perspective, the acceleration stays a constant. But now let's consider the whole thing from Einstein's perspective. We have to make a correction. And the correction we need to make is we need to incorporate length contraction, okay? So let's imagine that here initially, um, the, the, the speed of the Earth is not that high and therefore the length contraction is not that much. However, as the Earth moves from here to here, let's incorporate some length contraction. Now because of length contraction, what happens? Well, first of all, the Earth will, Earth will look squashed a little bit, but more importantly, these two distances will come closer, just like the stamps. And so when we add the correction factor, we wouldn't see the Earth here, but we would see the Earth slightly behind what we would expect from Newtonian physics. This means the distance it would have covered in the next second would be slightly less than what we would expect over here. Therefore, the acceleration that we would see in the next second would be slightly smaller than what we would expect from Newtonian physics. Length contraction. And you can see where we are going with this. Now, this Earth is moving even faster because it is accelerated, which means when you go from here to here, it would the length contraction would become more. And so as a result, we would again find that it would cover much less distance than what we would expect in Newtonian physics. In other words, we would again see its acceleration to be even smaller than what we would expect before. And this effect continues and you can see right in front of your eyes why the acceleration as we see of the Earth and everything else that's going behind also decreases and almost tends to become zero as the speed approaches C. Look. Over here, the distance traveled every second is almost remaining a constant. You can hardly see any acceleration over here. That's what happens when things are approaching the speed of light, when you look at things from the ship's perspective. Length contraction is the reason why you would never ever see any object, even from the ship's perspective, to be accelerating beyond the speed of light. We now have complete intuition, folks. If you put it all together, from the Earth's perspective, we never see the ship reaching the speed of light. Why? Because electromagnetic forces will start taking forever to transfer the forces. But even from the ship's perspective, even though we see our acceleration to be a constant, we will still see Earth and everything else, its acceleration slowing down because of length contraction. So whatever you do, folks, it's just not possible to reach the speed of light. And now I hope you have complete intuition for length contraction and time dilation, where it all comes from. And the whole goal of the channel is just that, to provide complete intuition for physics. So if you liked it, please subscribe. I'll see you.